Islamabad, the capital of Pakistan, is growing fast. All the conveniences of modern life are here. But Islamabad has one thing that few other capital cities around the world can boast. Right on its doorstep lies an area of outstanding natural beauty. One of Pakistan's most unusual and intriguing national parks. Magala Hills. The forested slopes pump out clean air. The high peaks capture precious rainfall and the dense undergrowth provides a sanctuary for a dazzling variety of wildlife. It affects the well-being of millions of people. In many important ways, the Magala Hills National Park is the beating heart of the nation's capital. Islamabad is a relatively new city. Built in the 1960s as the new Pakistani capital, its location was chosen in part for the beautiful setting where the Potahar Plain rises into the Magala Hills. In 1980, nearly 16,000 hectares of forest became protected as the Magala Hills National Park. The hills extend northwards towards the lower slopes of the Himalayas and they are the watershed from which much of Islamabad's fresh water flows. One of the larger rivers has been dammed to create a lake right in the heart of the city. Rawal Lake supplies the capital with water, but it has also become an important wildlife refuge and an extension of the national park. It is clean enough to support fish and many species of water birds, including a spectacular number of kingfishers. Location is everything. Competition for space doesn't just come from rival birds. People turn to these natural areas as a breath of fresh air within an ever-expanding city. The hills themselves are just a 10-minute drive from central Islamabad and city dwellers are drawn to its cooler air and peaceful atmosphere. Although the hills are full of wildlife, one animal in particular is most often seen and tends to steal the show. Rhesus macaques live in large extended families sometimes up to 80 strong. They spend hours grooming each other. It's the way they tend their relationships and keep the peace with one another. They're intelligent and curious. As in all clans, quarrels sometimes break out but the dominating presence of an alpha monkey means that social order is quickly restored.
well-marked trails make the park accessible to hikers and bird watchers. But few people know about its hidden treasures. Jewels such as the very rare Kalige pheasant that finds sanctuary within the thick undergrowth. Because of the dense bush, much of the park's most spectacular landscapes remain as wild as can be. Dramatic limestone cliffs help filter rainwater into pristine, clear streams. However, areas easily reached by people are under increasing pressure. Magala is one of the most visited parks in Pakistan, but most day trippers head to just a handful of beauty spots. In some ways, the National Park is the ultimate test of whether people and animals can live side by side. The park is so close to Islamabad and to commercial pressures that the boundary between urban sprawl and wild sanctuary is in constant danger of becoming blurred. Although the park faces many challenges ahead, there's a yearly reminder that the whole area is subject to a greater force of nature. The Margalas are the first hills in the path of the monsoon winds. As the moisture-laden air is forced upwards, it cools and condenses, bringing huge amounts of nurturing fresh water to this otherwise arid region. These annual rains replenish the streams and groundwater, but they also create something very special indeed. Subtropical warmth, sunlight and abundant rainfall make the hills a fabulous place for growth. A forest oasis where the lush vegetation nurtures a vast array of unusual invertebrates. Its varied landscape makes it one of the most biologically diverse areas in the whole of Pakistan. There are over 30 species of reptile. The blue-winged pitta is one of the gems among 250 species of bird. There's a wealth of colourful flowering plants and 55 different species of butterfly. The mix of species make the National Park renowned as a hotspot of biodiversity. The park is varied and unique for another important reason. The hills are a wildlife corridor 
a vital migration route, linking the plains with the mountains to the north. They provide a refuge for species sheltering from winter cold and those escaping summer heat. Wild boar used to live mainly on the southern plains, but some have migrated into the hills and have stayed. They move around in family groups, mostly trying to locate food with their amazing sense of smell. Margala is also home to colonies of fruit bats, the largest in the bat family having wingspans of up to 1.7 meters. As dusk approaches, they become restless, readying themselves for the long flights across the forest in search of nectar, flowers and fruit. Most other mammal species stay well hidden and are rarely seen. With the help of camera traps, it's possible to lift the lid on some of the park's shyest residents. They reveal rare moving images of creatures more usually found in northern pine forests like porcupine, or those from the drier southern plains, such as pangolin. Glimpses of civets, hares, foxes, and leopard cats less than knee high remind us that the park is crisscrossed by many different lives each contributing to the park's vitality. The cheeky monkeys are up early. At first light, trails that may be later followed by hikers are fleetingly used by barking deer. They're just half a meter tall, but their large barking calls are effective during the breeding season. They are constantly nervous of being ambushed by leopards which silently stalk through the shadows. Paths have become useful forest highways for Kalij pheasants. No one perfectly understands their social behavior, but they seem to prefer traveling in groups. They eat just about anything, from seeds to lizards, using their feet and beaks to flush out small animals from under the leaf litter. The trails help animals fast track to different parts of the park, but most of them will have retreated into the deepest parts of the bush by the time the park's human visitors turn up. This is the first time I've brought my friends here. I come here often because I like being in nature. There are trees and hills and the sound of water nearby. It's such a peaceful place, very peaceful. I am a working person. There are many working people who can take time from their daily lives to come here and get peace of mind. The trouble is, so many people visit that peace and tranquility can be hard to find. On busy weekends, the traffic is almost bumper to bumper. The park is just a short drive from Islamabad, 
so it's seen as the perfect place for a picnic and mass family fun. The open fires and outdoor kitchens have generated a huge problem. A growing amount of rubbish is left behind. Monkeys are extremely smart, quick to make the most of any opportunity. Leftover lunches are bound to attract them down from the trees. The closer they get to people, the more they're treated as pets. But they are wild animals, not tame ones, and some can become demanding and aggressive. The public, understandably, don't like it. Visitors can walk away from the problem, but the monkeys are just getting bolder by the day. It's not healthy eating by any standards. It's bad for the animals and it's changing the nature of the park. Wild boar wouldn't normally interact with monkeys, but over an abandoned biryani, they become rivals. Though today, it's outnumbered. It's not the animal's fault. It's the humans who are behaving badly. Even at home, you don't throw trash here and there. You dispose of it properly. Professor Mirza, an authority on the National Park, wants tougher measures. There should be guards on the tracks and on the roads. If they see anybody throwing garbage anywhere, there should be some fine. An on-the-spot fine is one solution, but the problem is so out of control that visitors must begin taking responsibility for their own waste. The people who come here must take their rubbish back with them. This is my request to everybody. This place has been created for us. We are the ones who have to keep it clean. If we trash it, no one will come here. It will be ruined. Maybe visitors would take better care of the park if they understood just how special it is. If they became aware of the amazing family dramas unfolding beside and above them. Some people, such as Riaz Mohammed, have already discovered the delights of the park's extraordinarily rich wildlife. Birds are his greatest joy. I feel like staying with these birds the whole of the day. Come in the morning, spend the whole day with the birds in Margala National Park, and then go back in the evening. That is my fascination. Through careful observation and learning their habits, Riaz has become better and better at capturing the gorgeous bird life in close-up. Bird watching doesn't necessarily require expensive kit, just patience. It's very easy and you will become addicted if you start watching the birds. They are beautiful. You just select spots and visit those spots every day and you will find new bird species in front of you. Spotted owlets, like this little family, are common residents of the park and actually thrive in natural areas, close to human habitation. The hills come alive in autumn, when more than a hundred bird species arrive from the northern latitudes to join the 82 species of resident birds in the park. Spring sees another surge in birds from the Himalayan regions, filling the park with birdsong. 
Bird lovers like Mirza and Riaz believe that visitors often make too much noise, which disturbs the birds and means they miss out on what could be an inspirational experience. We need to have more information centers and more guides to tell the people not to make noise. Rather sit in the nature, enjoy the beautiful birds coming down on the streams and uh, enjoy your time. But it's not just spiraling visitor numbers that are a challenge. The park is a beautiful place that's being squeezed from all directions. The road that zigzags across Magala was once a small track used by local people and easily crossed by the park's wildlife. Now, it's been upgraded. It's become an essential shortcut to and from Islamabad. Hundreds of vehicles use it day and well into the night. It's too fast paced for some of the park's slower movers. Every city in Pakistan is growing fast, every village in Pakistan is growing fast, and every natural area is shrinking. Since this national park has approaches from various places, it has more pressure from all around. Land values in Islamabad are soaring. Where there was once a buffer zone between the park and the city, development is pushing right up to the park boundary. In some places, this might not seem too bad. But to the west lies evidence of how easily the land around the park can be reduced to rubble. The hills are partly formed from limestone, one of the main ingredients needed to make cement. With the local construction industry booming, so has the need for cement and road chippings. Quarrying is noisy, pollutes the atmosphere and very quickly turns an already dry environment to dust. This vast quarry lies just outside the park boundary, but until recently, limestone was being extracted from within the park itself. The authority which governs the park, the CDA, has taken steps to control it. In Magala Hills National Park, there was a very big issue of mining limestone and quarrying. We have stopped it completely. But even if quarrying only takes place around Mogala, degraded land and general development turns the park into an island. Pylons, roads and other infrastructure prevent animals moving freely in and out of the park. Its value as a wildlife corridor has been compromised. The park boundary has been breached in other ways. A large restaurant hotel complex has been built on one of the park's most scenic passes. There are lots of pressures here. Many influential people want to construct hotels, homes and farmhouses. But we have controlled it very strictly. Our restaurant at Manal and others are two or three facilities that are very important for visitors. The big challenge is to strike a balance between preserving the wild nature of the park and the construction of visitor facilities. The solutions for these negative impacts is well-considered management plan. Which areas should be allowed for recreational purposes? Which areas should be no-go areas? 
there should not be general permission to everyone to go anywhere they like. The value of preserving the national park as a lush green oasis is perhaps greater than anyone realizes. The forested hills moderate the climate, acting like a huge natural air filtration system. It is said that a man needs four trees to compensate the oxygen consumed for respiration. Look at the number of trees here. It is a blessing. The way the park refreshes the local atmosphere is taken for granted, yet it may be Islamabad's saving grace. You know, within minutes of leaving your place of residence or your place of work, you are in a forest, you are in communion with nature. This is the lungs of Islamabad, and therefore it is terribly important to protect it and preserve it. This beautiful national asset should be easy to look after, lying as it does in plain sight of Pakistan's capital city. But the park already has its very own guardians. The hills are home to over 100,000 local people scattered in more than 30 settlements. Way back, their activities had little impact on the natural areas. But as land values skyrocket in Islamabad and development gobbles up land outside the park, poorer people have moved into these communities, putting a squeeze on the park's resources. Deforestation is a growing issue. Since these people are living inside the National Park area, they don't have alternate sources of energy. Out of necessity, they cut dry wood. We are trying to prevent wood cutting. We can't say that we are 100% successful at it. The main reason being that there are settlements and villages here. There are 100,000 inhabitants here and they have needs that we cannot neglect. They have to live and they opt for wood cutting. In larger settlements such as Sedpur, it's been easy to provide alternative fuel supplies, such as gas and electricity, as the village is very close to Islamabad. But most communities in the park are smaller and remote. There are a few here, then a few houses have been built there. So they're all scattered. It makes it difficult to provide facilities here. The upgrading of roads and utilities would cut ugly scars into the park and risks soil erosion. The president of the Magala Hills Society believes small local communities are part of the park's unique character. Whatever development uh, you have in mind, it must take care of the local population, you see, you know, and it should be based not on ejecting them, but on keeping them there. The only thing is, we should tell them that you can't build multi-story houses and that kind of thing, which you do not blend with the environment. Development must be managed very carefully because the native trees and wild animals, big and small, contribute to the soil's fertility and prevent its erosion. Long term, it's in local people's interests to take care of the land around them. 
An owner of a house can protect it better than anyone else. If, by protecting this forest and environment, they can find employment, then surely they will be able to perform. It is also in their interest, because this is their place. To improve employment prospects and awareness, it's vital that local boys and girls are offered an education at least as good as that in Islamabad itself. There should be good education in these areas so that they realize and understand how they should live in a national park. Local children could then find a role as the park's caretakers and custodians. Margala Hills National Park does not belong to CDA alone. It belongs to the entire city and each and every resident of this city. It is our collective responsibility that we play our role in its conservation and protection. There is the great wisdom to create this national park. It is an open book. You can read it and there is a message how to live with other creatures. Nothing can live alone in this world. That one learns when he comes here. Happy people live long, happy life. And this national park adds to that happy life. Margala is unique, a huge tract of pristine land lying in one of the most commercially pressurized areas in Pakistan. But the park is arguably its most precious asset. For the sake of our future generations, everyone must join together in learning about and looking after it. For the way in which it moderates the area's climate, provides fresh water, offers a sanctuary to wildlife, and reconnects people with nature. It is imperative that we understand that Margala Hills National Park is priceless. A natural treasure for us to cherish and protect.